All right, guys, welcome to another beer review. And as my watch decides to fly off my wrist, uh, today we're going over to uh, Northern Monk once again uh, for the first time in actually quite a while, to be honest. Um, I don't know, I've just not been picking up much beer um, aside from boxes, you know, I'm subscribed to and that sort of thing. But I was in uh, Manchester the other day, well, yesterday, and um, Picked up some clothes because I'm going to Germany. Needed, you know, my outfit for the party that I'm going to. And, of course, that ended up with me going uh, to a few places. And I went to Northern Monk because they were doing a, a Mikola um, tap takeover. And um, had the Citra Eyes, uh, which was a hazy New England IPA. It was tasting pretty damn fine. In fact, one of the best Mikola uh, brewed IPAs that I've had in quite a while. Um, so while I was there, picked up a few cans. Um, obviously, did the standard four cans of Heaven because it's one of the best beers in the UK, and uh, which you know train beer home as well. And I picked up a couple of cans. Uh, one of them is a, a beer that I'd, I'd already had at Northern Monk Refectory Manchester uh, the last time I was there um, after the uh, the beer Nomicon bottle show. Uh, and it was the uh, the Radler that they brewed with um, Lily Waits, um, the Queer Brewing Project, uh, which I just, I thought, I legitimately thought it was uh, an abysmal beer uh, because it tasted nothing like a Radler. But I thought, you know what? Sometimes you'll get a little bit of difference between a keg, cask, and then, you know, the can. So I picked up a can of that and uh, picked up another beer um, while I was there. And another entry into the uh, patrons project. So this is 20.01, which is brewed in collaboration with Mark Newton. And uh, this is actually the queer brewing project beer that I've picked up. Not the one that I intended to review, because uh, I want to chill this down. So, uh, fucked up already. Let me just quickly get the correct can. So yeah, look out for that review um, later on today, actually. So this is 8.07, and this is uh, brewed in collaboration with uh, Reese Leung, uh, Vague Magazine, uh, Vans Off The Wall, Gypsy Hill, and the National Skateboard Company. And this is the Double Dry Hopped New England Kulsh, uh, clocking in at 6% ABV, brewed with Atsaka, Thick Secret, and Citra BBC. Oi oi. And um, yeah, lovely uh, photography there. So I'll quickly uh, read you the, uh, the spiel um, on the wrap label. So Gypsy Hill Brewery was founded in London, UK in the summer of 2014 by Sam, Charlie and Simon. We put together all the cash we could raise and built a small brewery. Family, community and good choices guide everything we do. We take our time, nothing is rushed, no compromises. We batch select our malts and hops from the fields they're grown in. Our yeasts are grown in our own labs and our water is carefully treated. We share our profits with our team. We'd be nothing without every single one of them. If the company wins, our team wins as it should be. Uh, we're striving to make better beer and better beer choices. Uh, we'll always be striving. The harder the road, the greater the reward. And then uh, the aspect confirm containing uh, Vague, which is a really nice little uh, skateboard magazine, by the way. Uh, Vans Off The Wall and the National Skateboard Company. So the summer of 2019 saw Vans, the National Skateboard Co and Vague Mag officially cross paths for the very first time in order to bring the under review tour to life. By adopting the age old get in the van mindset across the course, four long months, a rotating cast of Vans and the National Skateboard Company endorsed individuals trekked to towns and cities dotted around in the UK in search of overlooked terrain, visiting our friends in retail and skating with a healthy cross-section of locals along the way. The result, a no-doubt mammoth article in Vague's 10th issue, and a company and feature edit which should be appearing on the internet at any time now, and a whole load of photo galleries and short clips from the Northern Monkfield sessions we held on each log of the tour. Mm. All of these are currently waiting for you on vaguemag.com. We'd like to extend a large thank you to everyone we bumped into whilst on the road, 
and the two and to the sterling guys at welcome drugstore 42 flat spot and slam city skates until next time and then you've got uh, some images from reese leung there uh, some awesome skateboard photography uh, believe it or not before i was a, a fat bastard uh, i actually did use to skateboard um, and it's been something I've been toying with again at the age of 30 is actually buying, you know, a skateboard and just, you know, skating around. Obviously, I don't think I've got the uh, the physical posture to um, uh, pull off any sick tricks. God, I sound so old when I say shit like that. But uh, yeah, it's just a fun way to get around. Plus, if I'm in Liverpool or Manchester or cities, what a great way to, to see a city. But yeah, there's uh, another example of the wonderful photography. So, notes from the brewer, brewed in North with Brian Dixon, Brethren number 002. The final beer on our Vague patron series, didn't realise they'd done a series with Vague or else I'd been all over that, was brewed with our South London friends Gypsy Hill, who have also begun working with Reese and the crew from Vague, making it fitting a collaboration for the final beer in the series. As always with our gold editions, which is gold number seven edition, uh, we wanted to finish with a bang. Sticking with a lager style, as we have throughout the series, we settle on the clean freshness of a Kolsch before adding some New England style adjunct malts and hoping to mix for the real hybrid of a brew. Over a base of Bamberger Pilsen malt and soft, slightly chloride-led brewing liquor, we threw, we threw in flaked oats and wheat for the silky mouthfeel they contribute. For hopping, we led with Azaka, a US dwarf variety which lends a spiciness and plenty of papaya, mango and tangerine character. Utilised solo in the whirlpool, we then added Australian Vic Secret and Citra BBC pellets to the mix with the 18 grams uh, per litre dry hop for a real fruit bowl of tropical flavours over a crisp, easy-drinking colch base. So, uh, doesn't go into uh, details of what the malts are, but yeah, 6% ABV, original gravity was 1.06, EBC is 8, and IBU are 18. So now I can finally catch my breath after reading through all of that. Um, but yeah, I like to promote any aspect of this series. Um, so that's why, you know, we're seven minutes in and I've not even opened the beer. Um, brand, well, not brand appropriate glassware, but at least we've got the appropriate style using my Viking Kolsch glass uh, that I got for the Mikkola Beer Club. And I'm wearing my turtleneck because I'm, I'm like Mikkel. No, I'm not. I know fat people shouldn't really wear turtlenecks, but I love wearing a good old turtleneck. Well, it's not really a turtleneck, is it? Um, turtlenecks are a little bit shorter. This is actually from uh, Uniqlo in Manchester, one of my favourite uh, clothes shops. I love it. Bought a nice um, Mac as well, which makes me look a little bit rapey, not going to lie. Anyway, let's pour the beer into the glass and see what we get. Probably should be picking a different glass, even though it is a Kolsch, but oh well. There we are. Ooh. And beer in the glass then. And uh, yeah, you'd think that you were uh, looking at like a session IPA or pale ale. Hazy. It's got that sort of lemon uh, curd look to it. Dirty glass. So let's stamp that down, get rid of those bubbles before the glass mafia comes after me. Um, but yeah, it looks really nice and pretty. You've got like a really chalky pale look to it. Uh, beer poured in this glass at least with uh, two things worth of a nice white compact looking head. But um, yeah, it certainly looks, uh, looks the part. Definitely looks New England and not that much like a Kolsch. Kolsch being a, a lager style that I'm not really the biggest fan of. Um, it's sort of like, I don't know, I find them really quite dull um, compared to something like a Hellas or a you know, Pilsner or something like that. And I know they are different because they use ale yeast. But um, yeah, Kolsch's I don't really gravitate towards to. But I'm at that point now where I want to revisit some of the bigger ones, do you know what I mean, and revisit the style. So I'm looking forward to seeing how hops are used in this. Um, I just hope it doesn't turn out like a, you know, a, a really light-bodied failure of a pale ale and IPA, like a lot of hop-forward lagers, pilsners, and 
that sort of thing can be but it's certainly looking good in the glass so let's see what we get on the nose and yeah you're getting the, the musky sort of a Kolsch style with the malt build and it's just lifted slightly by a little bit of melon character a little bit of fucking hell classic case of getting interrupted and I didn't actually mean to uh, get a little bit angry then but oh well so yeah on the nose you are definitely getting those tropical mellowy um, hoppy notes it sort of actually reminds me of the aroma of heathen with that hot build soft like sweet citrus character loads of mango papaya a little bit of pineapple but you do get that that malt build that you would expect and it's got that level of uh, earthy muskiness but yeah beautifully balanced on the nose anyway let's give it a taste cheers guys Not gonna lie, I'm not bowled over by it. It's got more of a hoppy tang as opposed to like a, a bold hoppy character. Um, but that being said, it's not what it could potentially have ended up being as sort of like a really unsatisfying pale ale or IPA um, esque experience. You definitely tell it's a Kolsch beer. From the flavour, from the bitterness, from the earthiness, from that slightly creamy mouthfeel that Kolsch has seemed to have anyway. I mean, it's tasty as fuck. It's so damn drinkable. It's the muskiness mix, mixing with those hops, which I do like. Yeah, a beer like this isn't going to last long in the glass. Do you know what I mean? At 6% ABV, it's a little bit heavier than you would expect. But it doesn't have that heavy-ish lager character you sometimes get. When beer styles like this are slightly imperialised, if that's the correct word. But yeah, I like it. I do like it. Sherbetty. It's got that sort of like tang fastic, it's like sour sweet character, mm -hmm. um, which I think works. But it's it's the balance of the whole thing. Doesn't veer off into one direction um, on the nose, on the, the body, or on the flavour. Everything works really nice in harmony. Um, I'm not drinking this uh, chilled. Um, this is pretty much straight out of my drinks cabinet over there. Um, it would probably go down a hell of a lot easier like most alcoholic beverages would do if this was chilled down really low but you know I don't have to drink these beers like that all the time do you know what I mean um, and I'm not advised to um, drink this in any sort of way um, on this can which is good people should be able to drink the beer the way they want to drink the beer and it's still got bags of flavour. It's still a very satisfying drinking experience. Does I actually mention a desired temperature for the beer? No, I don't think so. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I'm just not blown away by it. But it's definitely a refreshing take on a, a Kolsch and a a hopped beer of this style because the, the times in the past where I've had like a hoppy lager hoppy pilsner a lot of them the, the body of the beer doesn't carry the hops and you get a, an unsatisfying hop character this the hops are beautiful in this and something a little bit different I mean, Osaka, Vic Secret and Citra, all in one beer. It's sort of just a little bit different, but I think it works within the context of the style. And I actually, 
I'm a little upset that this is the last in this series because I'd really like to see what else they did with these sort of lager styles. Because uh, I've not had too many of these sorts of beers uh, from Northern Monk, uh, to be honest. But they've done it well. Um, it's got a little bit of spiciness there as well. A little bit of like white and black pepper character. Slight herbal, herbal notes. Um, but yeah, it, it's not bad. I'd, I'd happily you know, have a few more cans of this. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for it. I think getting four pack of Heaven, this and the um, the Rattler. I think you get you always get a twenty percent uh, takeout discount as well. I think it all came to twenty five quid. Um, so I think I paid a little bit more than I would like to for uh, a beer like this, and it's probably not my favourite. Um, entry into the patrons project series but i wouldn't turn it down you know if i was offered a few cans of it um i think even though uh, the summer is coming to a close now you know you could easily sit outside um with a barbecue uh mates around or you know just a gathering and just have some fun a perfect beer to you know if you want to go for a bit of a skate as well so yeah it's 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 okay it's okay so in terms of a rating then, um, I'm going to give this uh, gold number 7 edition, it's a 7 out of 10. Um, it's just solid enough, but there are other beers that I'd probably want to go for. Um, but I'm getting loads of um, even character in this. And that's probably because that was the last one of the last beers that I drank actually, actually drank yesterday. Uh, even, I love even. It's just such a great core range beer anyway so if you've tried this or any of the previous entries into this series in the patrons project i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below uh, go check out northern monk go check out gypsy hill uh, go check out everyone involved in this series and if you can get yourself a copy of vague magazine because i know in um and i'm sure it's in the leeds refectory as well but in the manchester um premises there's always complimentary editions of it and I've actually picked up a couple and had a really good time reading the articles, looking at the skateboarding photography. There's something really satisfying about the way uh, skateboarding is documented visually and the visual language of skateboarding and the, the artists involved in the, you know, the, the clothing, the, the decks, um, the actual the way a skateboard looks is just so satisfying um some really great branding some really great designers extremely talented athletes who don't get the credit of being athletes like they should do you know, fucking e-gamers seem to have a much more you know legitimized uh credit for their af athleticism than skateboarders do um we have some very talented individuals indeed uh, within the whole industry and uh, you know i had about five years um going around the uk uh with mates i say uk the same few places in the northwest of the uk but um yeah i mean uniqlo uh, were doing a series of the limited edition t-shirts and uh, one of those uh companies who were uh, being immortalized was girl skateboards and uh you know seeing that and then reading stuff like vague and then looking reminiscing of you know happier slimmer times um yeah skateboarding i'd like to you know pick up my board i've got my old deck uh, which was gifted to me by a friend who i just don't speak to anymore which is really sad um <laughs> we're not going to go down that that road by the way um and yeah just i don't know the whole aesthetic an ethos of philosophy when it comes to skateboarding. Um, it's just so satisfying. Anyway, I've waffed on for much, much too long. Um, thank you for sticking with me. Check out everyone involved in this. And uh, yeah, look out for more Northern Monk beers because it's been a while since I've actually picked up a Northern Monk beer to review. Anyway, thanks for watching and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers. <laughs>